In this episode, we're doing a simple recipe, but I believe it's going to be very delicious. This one's right out of Amelia Simmons's American Cookery Cookbook, Roast Beef. So technically, this is the first recipe in this recipe book. All Everything else is before it is instructional about how to choose uh, foods. But recipe number one is to roast beef. Let me read this to you. It's pretty simple. The general rules are to have a brisk hot fire, to hang down rather than to spit, to baste with salt and water, and one quarter of an hour to every pound of beef. Uh, though tender beef will require less time, while old tough beef will require more roasting. Pricking with a fork will determine whether you whether it's done or not. Rare done is the healthiest and the taste of this age. Now, I thought this recipe is very interesting. If you check a lot of recipe books, especially the English recipe books in the 18th century, not that many of them actually have roast beef recipes. Most of the time, it's uh, either roasting other meats or doing different things with beef. Now, either that's because roast beef was so common that they didn't think that you needed directions, or the beef of that time period was too tough to roast. I'm not sure which one is true. I'm guessing the latter rather than the former, but we'll find out. Um, I've got a simple sort of round roast here, and we're gonna try roasting it over the open fire. So she calls for hanging this, not putting it on a spit. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie this up with some uh, cordage I've got here. I want to make sure that in the end, this fat cap ends up on top, at least at the beginning of the cooking process, so the fats go down through the meat and we don't lose that. Um, so we wanna make sure that this ends up on top. Okay, so that looks like that's gonna hang really well like that. So let me get this knot kind of tied off. As long as our cord doesn't burn through, we'll be doing great. Let's uh, go ahead and rig this up by the fire. Okay, uh, you can see I've already set up the hearth kind of special with this. Uh, I thought I would try to decrease the cooking time a little bit by bringing in the reflector oven. Now this reflector oven is made to work with a spit, but I'm gonna experiment, see if I can get it to work with the hanging piece of meat here. I've tilted it up with a couple of fire bricks up in front, kind of tilt it up a little bit, and so I can hang the meat down in front and still catch the drippings, but it reflects this heat, so we don't lose uh, all that backside heat, and I'll probably have to experiment with the fire a little bit. Uh, here you can see, let's, let's go ahead and hang this and get it started. So here is, our piece of beef here. And hopefully I'll continue to experiment and get that just right. There we go. Now she calls for a high brisk fire. And that's why I brought this, this fire. You can see I've kind of raised it up on top of fire bricks so that the, not all of the, the uh, heat kind of goes in uh, all, you know, from the bottom, but we're kind of trying to get some side heat on this. Um, so we actually, you know, every kind of fireplace or every kind of open fire pit, you're gonna have to do your own little experimenting about how you can get this fire to not be basically underneath it, but um, get the meat beside this. So I'll continue to experiment with this. And I also have to be ready as this starts to cook, cook up to baste it with uh, basically salt water, she, what she calls for. So water and salt. Now some of those later, uh, some of those earlier, sorry, English uh, ones have some other bastings that come into this um, when you roast beef in this manner. But those uh, kind of fancy um, bastings come in at the very end of the cooking. So, and this one's just very simple. It's just salt and water. So that's what we're gonna get going with this. So we wanna uh, come back to this uh, every so often. This isn't something you really wanna leave go too much all by itself, but we wanna stay here. We want to you know, keep it spinning um, every minute or so. We come in here and uh, spin this if we need to. We can you know, pick this up, change the loop around so that the other side kind of stays uh, if we're not gonna spin it a lot. And uh, continue to tend the fire so that we have a nice, clear, bright flames 
that are sort of beside it. Again, that's what we're trying to, and of course, we have to keep basting this thing too. We don't want it to dry out. So it isn't something that, that you leave behind. In fact, if you watch, if you look at the paintings, uh, sometimes they'll, they'll be a, a little boy by the fire who's continuing to either crank the spit or, you know, tend these things as they're cooking. So they almost always have somebody that's continually tending these. Again, remember uh, the timing on this. She said that's about 15 minutes per pound. This guy is running, I don't know, probably two and a half, three pounds. So it should take half hour, 45 minutes. We might shrink the time uh, by having this reflector oven, you know, as thick as I'm thinking this piece of meat is, I'm, I'm worried that it's gonna take a little longer. So, you know, we'll just see how it turns out. I mean, again, this is an experiment. I've never done one quite like this. So uh, I'll cook it until I feel like it's done. Okay, well, let's uh, see how this has done. I have been, it looks like about, about an hour and a half cooking this. It's taken a lot longer. Actually, I think I was too far away from the fire at the beginning, uh, so it took a lot longer. Although, if you read some of the other directions, like Hannah Glass, she says to start out farther away from the fire, then when it starts to look done, you bring it closer and speed up the cooking, which is exactly what I ended up doing, maybe by accident, but that's what I ended up doing. Um, uh, Amelia Simmons says to try this out by uh, putting a fork into the flesh and seeing what kind of fluids come out. Um, she doesn't, you know, go into a whole lot of detail, but, you know, when I press the fork deep into the center of this, I'm getting mostly clear fluids. So I think we're doing pretty good. Still might be a little, probably pretty rare in the middle, but of course, Amelia Simmons says that's the healthiest and the taste of the age. So. I think I'm going to go ahead and slice a piece off of this, see how it turns out. Wow, you know, you could start to tell when this was getting done, when the you know, it really comes up with the smell that you're, you know, really salivating for. <laughs> and uh, this really, uh, really turned out well. It looks so wonderful. It smells great. You know, I cut into it and it's still, you know, a little rare in the middle, but nice and cooked. It's still a little pink. Um, for a nice big piece of meat like that, I think that turned out pretty much perfect. I, I couldn't have uh, done it. I couldn't have guessed any better. Uh, so it's uh, time to try this out. And I, I went ahead and put a little mushroom ketchup on it just because, I mean, that's the thing for these kinds of things, mushroom ketchup. Although uh, I probably didn't need to, this was gonna be so good without it, but I had to do it because mushroom ketchup is so great. So let me cut up a little bit, bit here and we'll try it out. Mm. Amazing texture and wonderful smoky flavor along with the mushroom ketchup. Um, just, just excellent. Uh, just like you, you know, you really expect it to be with this wonderful roast beef over the open fire, you know, hung and spun and uh, basted with the, the uh, salt water wonderful wonderful flavors uh, if you get a chance to do an open fire uh, roast beef like this especially at an event uh, where you can kind of watch it and, and keep it going take some time with it you know don't don't try to cook it too fast it's one of those things you really just have to give it a lot of time and uh, wow just so wonderful excellent flavors um, everyone everyone will will talk about this for you know, months to come if you make one of these at an event or even at home for that matter. Such wonderful flavors. And right out of Amelia Simmons's cookbook, 1796, that's an American cookbook. She does quick, simple, easy directions for this and uh, turned out great. There are more complex ones if you go back and look at the English cookbooks and they get all fancy, but Amelia Simmons is like, no, it's not that tough. Let's, let's do it simple. So, wow, this one is such a wonderful recipe. I hope you get a chance to try it, really. 
do if you get a chance. Uh, I really want to thank you for all your amazing support. You, you come along, you watch the videos, you, you comment on them, you share the videos. That's how people find this channel, uh, you sharing the videos. So thank you so much for that. And we also get support from folks on Patreon or folks that go over to our website and purchase things from our merch store. That is so important. It helps us do continue to do these, these videos. So thank you so much for all your amazing support. Thanks for coming along as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century.